So how can we use for each loops and collections in VBA to get stuff done really quickly? Well, as always, we're gonna practice with reference to uh, a kind of real life example. And the example relates to cleansing data. And if you've used Excel for any period of time, you will have had to do this. I've had to do it hundreds of times, I think. So I've developed techniques for doing it quickly. But what am I talking about? Well, if we have a list of names, if we're cleansing the data, then we're checking that all of the names, the spelling of the names is correct. For example, we've got Charlotte here in row nine. Somebody has missed out an A uh, in the name, which means that uh, that might create errors elsewhere in the spreadsheet. So data cleansing is going through the data and checking the, uh, the spelling, uh, checking generally that the data is accurate. Clearly a really time consuming, boring task. You know, I've got 200 items of data for just because I'm demonstrating, but you might have 50,000 items or more. Clearly it's gonna take a very long time or it might be impossible. So what options are available to us using for each collections and Visual Basic? We're gonna go through the first step uh, in this video. We're talking about Visual Basic, so a good first step is to get the um, Visual Basic editor open. You can use Alt F11 if you're on a PC, Alt F11 to get it open. And then we're going to insert a module, the modules in there, and then create a new routine. I'm going to say uh, cleanse data. It's good that the name of the routine relates to what the function, uh, the function of the routine. So the name of the routine describes what the routine does. That's going to help you later when you have lots of macros. And then if we're working with a collection and for each, um, we have to declare a variable so that Excel understands uh, the objects that we're talking about. Don't worry about the technical words. They really don't matter, but it's worth bearing in mind Excel has various uh, collections available. Excel understands all of the workbooks that are open as a collection. Excel understands um, all of the sheets in a workbook as a collection. And the collection we're looking at is uh, the collection of cells uh, in a worksheet. So that's what we're gonna tell Excel to look at. But we don't want to look at the whole worksheet. That would take too long, it'd be too inefficient to look at every cell on the worksheet. So the, the topic of this video is how do we get Excel to look at a particular range of cells, but not a fixed range of cells, to look at a range of cells that can change um, according to if data is added or taken away. So we're gonna need a dynamic reference. So how do we set all that up? That's the topic of this video. Um, so let's say variable declaration. I'm gonna say dim Chris cell. Uh, as range. Uh, range is the variable type we need because we're talking about uh, cells and range is, is, is the word that um, uh, VBA uses uh, for the variable. And you can see that um, I've used Chris cell as the name of the variable. Again, a meaningful name for the variable. That's going to help us understand uh, what's going on. So we've got, um, we've declared um, an object variable, Chris cell as range. Then we can start thinking about putting the loop together. So I'm going to say for each Chris cell, for, so for each cell in uh, a certain range, I'm going to leave the code there for a second because we want to see how big is the range of data we're looking at. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to program this dynamically, but first let's just put a static reference in there to get started. So we've got reference, uh, we've got data, in cell B3, and it's safe to assume that's where the list is gonna start, uh, all the way down to control, control and down cursor to go back down to the bottom, all the way down to cell uh, B200. So we can say initially, at least, for each Chris cell in range uh, B3 to B200, and then next Chris cell. Uh, always remember when you're opening a loop, if we're saying for each, we're opening a loop, it's always best to close it straight away. Don't rely on yourself to remember later to close it. Close it straight away. Good coding practice. So this would work fine. This is a good starting point. We've got a static reference. Uh, so we're saying to Excel, do something to all of the cells in the range B3 to B200. That's okay. But what's the downside to that? Well, the downside is if this list um, expanded, for example, if I put another, another entry at the bottom of the list, because of the static reference, 
this um, last piece of data I've just put in would be excluded. Okay, so how can we make this reference, improve this reference to make it dynamic? Okay, and this is going to involve using worksheet formulae and VBA together, and that's when you start getting into really powerful coding techniques when you're harnessing the power of both. So we're looking for a formula to tell us how much data is in column B. How much data is in column B? What formula might that be? You might know the count A formula. Count A tells us how many cells in a specified range contain data. So it's a good way to establish how much data is in a column. I've got the equal sign there, put that in. So that's saying there's 200 pieces of data uh, in the column. Okay, that's the count A formula. So let's take that and let's use a cell reference to, um, we're, we're in cell E10 there. So let's use that cell reference, um, replace this part of the code, use an and sign, and then let's just reference the cell. E10, that's where the formula is, dot value. Okay, so that's now changed from a static to a dynamic reference. Why is it dynamic? Well, as we add data, um, the value that this formula, the Kante formula is returning, is going to get higher. If we take data away, that's going to get lower. And uh, Visual Basic, the code is going to recognize that because we've used the cell reference to specify the range. Okay, if it doesn't make sense, don't worry, you'll get a hang of it uh, as we go along, but that's a really nice dynamic technique. Okay, um, so this looks reasonable, but as always, it's good practice to test it. So I'm going to just copy and paste that code and then ask uh, Excel to just select that range. Okay, so I've just put that at the beginning of the routine to select that range so I can understand if the reference uh, is accurate. I've got a feeling it's going to require a little bit of tweaking. Now you can use this, uh, you can test this by stepping into using the F8 key on a PC. When I'm doing screen recording, I can't use the function keys uh, on my laptop. So I've put, a, I've put a, uh, a stop in there. I'm going to hit play. And then step into once. Okay, so Excel has executed the line of code that's highlighted in red and claret there. And we can see what it's done. Go back to the worksheet. We can see it's selected this range. But the question is, has it selected everything we need? Okay, we can see that um, it, it needs one more row in the selection to select all of the data. So I'm going to just tweak the formula here. Tweak that. Uh, just said plus one. And then run the code again. Stop that, run it, then I'm going to say debug, step into, it's executed the line of code that's highlighted in red. And we can see it's highlighted the list. So we're expecting an extra cell to be highlighted. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. There we go. And all of the data is now highlighted. Okay, so that shows we've tested it and just tweaked it a bit to get it working uh, really nicely. Okay, that's a great example of combining uh, Visual Basic, combining Visual Basic code and um, worksheet formulae together to develop a really nice dynamic uh, technique, okay? But I've tested that now, so we can delete that line of code. And now we've tested it, and I'm happy that uh, this line of code is specifying the correct range. It's uh, specifying all of the data in that list. So even if data is added, taken away, it's going to specify going to specify that range. So it's a really nice dynamic uh, application. Okay, That's as far as we're going to go in this video. In the next video, we're going to tell Excel what we want it to do to each cell inside the 4next uh, loop. See you in the next video.